Are you imaging in between each just to make sure you, your needle's right in that cortex on not CT? In, no, not in between each. Sometimes. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. If for some reason I think like there was any kind of play in the needle as I'm putting the, the biopsy device in and out, then yeah, I'll, I'll take a look and make sure I didn't push in or push out. Um, but oftentimes, or, or like when I take a sample and then I get nothing back, right. like, oh, well, what's happened here? Um, so sometimes I'll image in between, but most of the time I don't in between image in between each sample. Okay. So yeah, let me tell you, I, so I do image in between because the reason is that, yeah, sometimes their breathing changes the, you know, like, like you said, the needle moves in or out. And I just like that confirmation, that visual confirmation that my needle is through that cortex. It didn't go too far and get into the, into the, the, you know, the renal pelvis or, you know, where there's a bunch of blood vessels. It's not like you know, poking through and through, none of that. So I, I just want visual confirmation. And I usually max out at three. And um, the reason for that is typically that's all you that's all you need. Uh, sure. You know, ours are mailed out at most of the hospitals I cover where you put them in those three tubes. Yep, ours is and, too, right. And, but what I do, and this is kind of a trick for the audience in case this ever comes up, but because that barred 18 gauge needle takes such good samples, what I'll do is I'll ask the nurse uh, when I when I'm first getting started to have my needle in place. I'll say, "Hey, put a wet telfa on my back tibble." Mm -hmm. And instead of putting that when I get that first sample, instead of putting it straight into the first tube, I put it on the wet telfa, and and then for, and then I'll proceed with the, the second one. And the reason I do that is because I've been burned where I took that first sample and then I I go to take my second sample. I take the Stylet out and I got blood shooting out, right? And and it's I got an immediate bleed, right? I got an immediate bleed and, and I gotta kinda take care of that. And um so I'll put the stylet back in, I'll scan. If I got a hematoma, then I'll put some gel foam in, you know, watch it, scan it. But I'm not going back in for another biopsy, right? Okay. Um checking their blood pressure. Maybe their blood pressure shot up, right? And they're back in the one seventies, one eighties. I gotta take care of that. So the reason why I take that one stable point of wet telfa is then in that case. I'll cut that one good piece into three pieces and put it into three tubes. Uh, and that way you have a sample for each tube and it might be perfectly adequate. So anyway, that's my little way because I, I hate that. I hate it when it's like, ah, fuck it, they're bleeding. I got to um, address this. I'm done with taking samples. I'm going to put this, you know. Uh, and so that's why I do that. The sample thing, you know, I've never had any issues with three. With three, I never, you know, sometimes a, a, a nephrologist will ask specifically for four, and then I'll mm -hmm. do four. But typically, they don't. There's one nephrologist in, in particular who tends to ask for four. So that's uh, so. Let's talk about immediate Hold on, bleeding. Do you, do you have Do you have path on site to come and and count? No, no. Okay. I mean, I might be able to ask them, but it's going to be a whole process. And again, I'm trying to. You know, once I get their blood pressure under control and they're set up, I'm trying to speed things along. I don't want to be sitting there waiting for. You Look, know. I'm I, I'm totally with you, and like I, I get it. Like on their side, they're they're probably busy, and so like the last thing they want to do is come down and count glomerulus, something they're not right. used to doing or do it very commonly. And you know, maybe according to their pathologist, maybe doesn't even know what they are looking at, which you know could be the case. So yeah, I but I I still like having path, and I like to get because. And actually going back to like with your point, like sometimes you take a biopsy and you have a gusher, like you're talking about, like you remove the stylet and it's like kind of pumping blood out. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I, and so <laughs> I know this is like counter to what exactly what you just said, which is all reasonable reasons to like stop. But a lot of times I'm like, all right, we already have a bleed. We might as well get it some good samples. And so like after like I have a pumper or what looks like it, I mean, you know, I'll still take whatever samples I need. And then um, one of the tricks that I like to do is like I... I don't always put the stylet all the way back in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. put it halfway in and let that right. column fill up with blood. Yeah. I like that move. I, I, I really like that move. And and yeah, it's like, uh, it's, a, it's it, you know, it's, it costs you nothing to do. Right. Right. Uh, right. And, and oftentimes when you do that, so for the audience, just to kind of take a step back. So we have immediate bleeding, right. And whether, whether you've gotten all your samples or not, you, you, you pull your needle out, you have bleeding. So, you know, you're going to do something. So, Put the needle back in, you know, a quarter to a halfway. As long as it stands, will sit in that stylet. You have it sit in there, or sorry, the stylet. As long as the stylet sits in that cannula, you just don't put it all the way in. That column. What Chris was just describing is that column fills up with some blood, and the time that you take to even get your gel foam set up or your make your little torpedo or what you whatever you're going to do on the back table, a lot of times you can 
you can then push that column of blood. It's probably clotted. You, you've given it enough time to clot, you know, three to five minutes or so, five, 10 minutes. And you push that back in. And then when you go to pull your stylet back out to put that torpedo in, sometimes there's no bleeding after that. And you're like, okay, we're done. And then you pull everything out. 